All right, let's get started then. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good afternoon and thank you everybody for joining us today. Uh, I really want to thank Briar Patch for hosting. Uh, as we celebrate what I think is a really unique and amazing opportunity for Madison. As you all know, one of the most serious issues facing our community is the lack of affordable housing options. And unfortunately, housing insecurity impacts the lives of far too many young people in Madison. Too many young people, especially young people aging out of the foster care system, face the prospect of homelessness. But we are coming together as a community to address this issue. Recently, I committed $2 million of funding in my 2022 capital budget to develop permanent housing to serve youth aging out of the foster care system who are facing the prospect of becoming homeless. And now, I am excited to announce that we have been selected for HUD's Youth Homelessness Demonstration Program. Madison will receive technical assistance and support from HUD to develop a coordinated community plan to prevent and end youth homelessness. HUD provides funding that allows communities to implement the strategies identified in the coordinated community plan. This will allow us to create a system clearly designed by youth for youth that is welcoming, supportive, encouraging, and helps youth achieve and maintain housing stability. This initiative, the HUD initiative, uh, is designed to reduce the number of youth experiencing homelessness in communities across the nation. And I am very grateful that they have chosen Madison to be a part of this. The HUD grant award is a great opportunity for the city of Madison to continue our partnership with the organizations that contributed to the application, including the Youth Action Board, Dane County Continuum of Care members, Briar Patch, the county itself, the Road Home, the Madison School District, the Sun Prairie School District, the Institute for Community Alliances, and the Homeless Services Consortium's Committee to End Youth Homelessness. I am really delighted that we have some of these partners here today. And I would first like to welcome Gloria Reyes, the director of Briar Patch, to say a few words. Gloria. Thank you, Mayor. Um, uh, we have my, our Briar Patch, Briar Patch team here. Um, I want to thank you uh, for being here today. And we also have uh, Board Chair uh, Kate Riley, um, uh, who has joined us. And there she is, AI. Um, our Briar Patch staff and board are an amazing team of people who care so deeply about our youth. Many have lived experience and understand the challenges that our youth face today. Thank you for your ongoing commitment, professionalism, and compassion that you bring to your work every day. I want to give a special shout out to Tori Kottmuller. Yay! Yay. Our city's continuum of care coordinator, who I learn from every day. Throughout the grant process, Tori stayed persistent, focused, and led us through the process. And thank you to our collaborative grants team who are here today, who, who each provided their perspectives and expert, expert guidance in writing the grant. This is an opportunity to work in collaboration with our community, elevating the issue of youth homelessness. Developing a comprehensive plan that will support and reduce youth experiencing homelessness and obtain sustainable housing. This funding opportunity allows us to proactively prevent homelessness in our community. Our most vulnerable youth often stay and raise families here in Madison and Dane County. When we provide intervention support and tools necessary to succeed, our entire community thrives. This grant opportunity allows us to build that system of support alongside our collaborative partners, including nonprofits, government, private corporations, and foundations. Briar Patch is excited for the opportunity to, to be the lead agency for the YHDP grant. We are honored that the HSC board selected Briar Patch to lead this work. This year, Briar Patch is celebrating 50 years of service in our community. It has been a time for reflection of our history. Celebrate how far we have come in serving our most vulnerable youth in our community. It has given us the opportunity to envision our future. 
The future of building the capacity to serve our most vulnerable youth that allows our youth voice to guide and lead us. An investment in people who do this work every day. Our, a future that provides every child shelter, their basic needs met, and wraparound services that are directed to individual needs of that child. A future that allows our youth to be kids and to dream big, building job skills, financial literacy, so they understand that their current circumstances does not dictate their future, and that is never too late to dream big. A future where a community wraps themselves around our youth and says, you are not alone. We got you. And truly invest in the future without barriers. I attended, along with my street outreach team, uh, the Wisconsin Association of Homeless and Runaway Services um, earlier this week. And our very inspiring keynote speaker, Jeremy Triblett, said that we need radical imagination and hope for a better world. I can't agree more. This opportunity and process will require radical imagination and hope. Our youth are experiencing significant challenges, living in unprecedented times that will impact their future. This opportunity couldn't come at a better time, transforming the lives of youth and building the capacity within our community that can support their growing needs and challenges. Here at Briar Patch, we take the pain of our children and move that into movement and action. As a community, we also need movement and action, focusing on building a better future that begins in investing in our most vulnerable youth. That is what this grant allows us to do. Radical imagination, hope, movement, and action. As we continue to celebrate this wonderful opportunity for our youth, I need to be, put a plug in for our Briar Patch 50th anniversary event <laughs> on November 4th, between 6 to 10 p.m. Uh, at Brassworks at Goodman Center. You can register by going to www.briarpatch.org. It is a wonderful opportunity for our community. It is a time for reflection. It is a time to process where we have been but then it's also a time to look into our future and where we are going. Thank you, and I do have a message from our technical assistance providers that I would like to read. On behalf of uh, Youth Collaboratory and ABT Associates, we would like to congratulate the Madison Dane County community on being awarded the Youth Homelessness Demonstration Project Grant. We are excited to be working in partnership with you to make this program a success and help drive effective strategies that assure the safety and well-being of the young people in our community. Unlocking their limitless potential, we have seen in previous rounds of YHDP the progress communities can make when young people with lived experience of homelessness and community programs come together to co-create coordinated community plans and implement innovative housing and service projects. This came from Roy Graham and Whitney Patterson, our uh, HUD YHDB technical assistance providers. Thank you. Thank you, Gloria, and thank you for sharing that message from the technical assistance providers. It is now my pleasure to welcome uh, to the podium Alder Brian Benford, who has been a tireless advocate for our youth in Madison, uh, and I know will be absolutely essential in this project as it moves forward. Alder? Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thanks. As Gloria said, the opportunity couldn't come at any different time. So I'm, I'm really, I want to thank you so much. I want to thank the amazing city and county staff that are here. And uh, it's really an honor to be here at Briar Patch Youth Services and all the decades of tremendous work that they do. So thank you, Gloria, and good to see you, Tyler, and other folks. So. Once again, it's a, it's a great honor to be here. And uh, as I look around the room, I see Greg from Operation Fresh Star, Janny from the school district, and Road Home Alley. And most importantly, I see members of the Youth Action Board. So I am so excited to lend my voice. So for over 30 years, I have served marginalized youth, young adults, their families, and communities to reach their full potentials. I currently serve as a success coach and social worker for the UW-Madison Odyssey Project. 
For far too many years, I have witnessed these marginalized, diverse youth and young adults negatively impacted by homelessness. I've seen people suffering. As I worked at the respite center, I sat across from young adults with children who had to make horrific choices. They had to find a safe place for their children while they had to decide if they were gonna sleep in their car or trade sex for a pillow. As a resource specialist based out of Operation Fresh Start as a part of a great collaboration within the WorkSmart Network, I was charged with uh, serving youth that was aging out of foster care. And our county's independent living team was amazing. They did their due diligence. And then when the uh, young adults aged out of foster care, they were tagged to me. For more times than not, I, I couldn't find housing. And we all know that for us to reach our full potential, it begins where, where we lay our head at night. That sounds simple. But that's the visceral reality that for us to grow, for us to address other traumas in our life, we need a safe, secure place to lay our head at night. I also work with youth that regrettably were uh, forced into human trafficking because there just wasn't these types of foundation. There wasn't this hope in the community. And I'm here to tell all of us, you already know it, that we have to put an end to that. So if there was ever a time that uh, this opportunity was needed, I, as Gloria said, I can't think of a better time. So this gives us all hope, and hope is so important. So I want to end my remarks, and I'm really excited that members of the Youth Action Board, because as it was said earlier, members of the Youth Action Board are going to have a vital hand in designing and implementing this. So with this, I want to thank you again, Mayor, and I want to thank everybody here. Thank you, Alder. Uh, and now it is my pleasure to welcome two Youth Action Board members, Ari and Deja. Please join us. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Ari. My name is Deja. And we are both members of the Youth Action Board. Um, we are a group of youth and young adults who come together and collaboratively work together to, who, I'm sorry, who have either experienced home homelessness or who are currently experiencing homelessness. Mm -hmm. And we come together to figure out systems to support those who are going through that and support ourselves in that same thing while unpacking <coughs> trauma and things like that. Uh, well, right now we're going to define like our definition of homelessness. Me, myself, I've personally been going through homelessness since the age of 15. Me and my mom and my sisters and my brothers, we were put out due to like some thing with our landlord. And with an eviction on our record, it's just been kind of hard to, you know, get into a spot. And the Youth Action Board is going to kind of help us and other members like us get into a, play, a place because of our age and how young we are. I just turned 18, by the way. Homelessness can also, is also defined as a spot where a person is sleeping in a place where it is inhabitable. That could be a car, a hotel, mm -hmm. um, a bench, it could be a shelter. Any place that is, in layman's terms, not a home, right? Um, I know there's a lot of definitions to it, but that is the one that's more holistically should be accepted and understood. Um, with do this grant, it definitely, ah, sorry, words. Um, we really want to talk about the needs youth have and the services that they, um, that could be provided. Um, my biggest thing is for um, child, youth who are parenting or are pregnant. We currently, those, those are, that's a demographic that is highly underserved in Dane County. Um, because of so many legal logistics, right? Um, my hope is that we can create a system with this where th those parents who have now become or are underage, right, mm -hmm. um, have that kind of support versus having to go through another, like, temporary Band-Aid where they will be, after two weeks, having to figure out what their life looks like for them and their young child. Some other things we are hoping that this grant allows us to have is shelters for people under the age of 18. We have a lot of shelters for people over the age of 18, but not many under. A lot of kids are bouncing from 
friend's house to friend's house or like he mentioned or other people mentioned earlier from cars and it's just not safe for youth to be doing that. And from my experience, access to healthcare. I remember being 18 and being on my own since I was 16, 17, mm -hmm. and not having access to Medicare because I've aged out of the one. Under, um, so trying to give them, give youth the access to good quality healthcare. We're also planning to help tr help youth tran transition from their parents' house into their own homes which will really, really help anybody over the age of 18, honestly. Now, I know many of you are wondering what could these funds be used for in our community for our youth. Um, youth focus, these funds could be used for youth focused services that could follow young adults as they age out of foster care and the school system um, and ensure continuity between minor youth services and adult youth services. Mm -hmm. And lastly, build programs that serve both populations at once for um, youth 18 through 24. 24. So we're going to just kind of describe like what we've kind of helped with the process of through our, the application and, you know, moving forward. Um, we personally put, put in our own how should I say it, experiences or quotes um, into the application to just kind of allow people to feel what we've kind of been going through. Um, Youth Action Board had to sign off on the Youth Homeless Demonstration Program's um, application. And then moving forward, we will receive technical assistance from youth-focused national organizations like True Colors United who can support youth and center them in the creation of community plan to end youth homelessness. We also do have a youth on the HSC board, which is actually Ari. <laughs> <laughs> and we are hopefully gonna get more to that spot to add more youth voice and more perspective and more experience to make sure that as um, Gloria and um, Ryan said, we have a radical change. Yeah. Thank you all. Well, I think this plan is in good hands. Um, I just want to say again, uh, everything we've heard today just emphasizes how important it is for our community to build more housing, to build more affordable housing and to work on targeted solutions like this grant will let us, right? It's so important that we engage the people who are experiencing the issues as we try and solve them. And so thank you very much to both of you for serving on the Youth Action Board um, and for bringing your voices and your lived experience into this process. It's so incredibly valuable. I also want to thank uh, all of the partners that have gotten us this far and that will continue to collaborate on this very exciting project. Certainly Briar Patch, but also Dane County, the Youth Action Board, the Homeless Services Consortium, city staff, and I have to call out uh, Jim O'Keefe, Lynette Rhodes, Sarah Lim, and Tori Kopmuller. Thank you, Tori, for all your work on this. The school district, both Madison and Sun Prairie School Districts, Operation Fresh Start, Housing Initiatives, Mach 1 Health, The Road Home, Community, Commonwealth Development, Sankofa, ELU, uh, the Alders, particularly Alder Benford, uh, but others that have been involved, HUD, of course, for selecting us, <laughs> uh, and the technical support and funding that comes with that, all of the folks that work with youth, and of course, the youth themselves that will be involved in this. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I am so excited about the resources that are going to be coming to this community here and the progress that we're going to be able to make because of them. And now I think all of the folks that spoke would be happy to take questions if there are any. Is there a timeline for when this plan can be developed? Uh, so we do have a kickoff meeting um, scheduled for October um, 11th. Uh, and that's going to be meeting with our entire collaboration uh, partners. Um, 
it, it, it begins with a planning process um, and it is a six to nine month process where we will engage youth um, led in community wide planning process to envision what um, what we need to end youth homelessness across um, COC and put that into a coordinated community plan. And so that really is the first step. And then we move into a um, project selection um, based on what we've decided, what we've heard from our community, heard from our youth. Uh, we'll host a um, local competition for who will run uh, new projects using the YHDP funding. And so uh, project uh, applications would be due around um, July 1st of 2022. And then we'll move into implementation. Um, and so it's very similar to um, many of our federal funding processes that we have done, uh, particularly on the, um, the crime reduction um, grant that we received on the um, west southwest side. Um, and it's just an ongoing system, right? It is sort of the planning. This is really the important part where we um, get community engagement, we hear from our community, those with lived experience, and how to best serve our youth for the first six to nine months. Oh, Tori, did you want to add anything? No, we have covered it. <laughs> Other questions? Mayor, you mentioned the $2 million in your capital, your executive capital budget um, for housing for youth aging out of the foster care system. Um, is there a specific plan where that $2 million is going to go or could go to, like a is there a project in the works? No, so this, the $2 million is, comes from ARPA funding and we're allocating it in the 2022 capital budget. So assuming the council adopts the budget and keeps that funding in, um, we'll begin a process next year um, to start developing that project uh, and uh, finding the other funding that will be necessary to get it built um, and with the eye towards uh, creating um, I, what I hope will be a really exciting um, housing complex uh, that serves youth aging out of foster care. So it'll, it's, it'll be a probably multi-year process. Other questions? Our community in general has been talking a lot about homelessness and how to solve these issues, especially with the site on Zaire Road, Rindell Park. How will helping get these programs in for young people hopefully prevent people from being older and needing that sort of help? I, I think that um, it's, it's really critical for us to uh, catch the places where people can go from being housed to being unhoused, right? And I think what you've heard today is that one of those places is as youth make the transition either from their family's house or from foster care, uh, and that they may not have a bridge to permanent housing for themselves. And so this project, uh, both the, the HUD grant and then also the ARPA funding that we're dedicating, is really about looking at that gap and trying to bridge it and making sure that people have secure and stable and affordable housing options as they make that transition. So is there a point then when they would age out of the, the sort of apartment complex or? You know, that when you run into the same thing when they're 23 or 24 or... It's, we're, you know. we're not at that point yet in the, in the project <laughs> development. Ask us in six months. <laughs> but no, I think we don't want to create future cliffs or, cliffs or gaps. I think what we want to do is make sure that we can create a situation where people can have stable housing in our community, where everyone can have stable housing in our community and everybody can have housing that they afford in our community. And to get to that, it's going to take us creating a lot more housing units, both market rate and affordable, and creating a whole array of housing choices for folks. And that's what I'm focused on. That's what this grant will help us do. Any other questions? Well, that also benefits um, mothers of like youth that are young and their parents um, and their babies, so they're not strip you know from their babies because there are not are enough homes for those youth parents and their children will that you know help out with some of that problem too i think that has to be part of the conversation absolutely i think that 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 has to be part of this planning process because that is one of the pain points right where we're seeing people experience homelessness that are parents that are young parents um, and that's absolutely critical for us to address any other questions? 
All right, thank you again to everyone here. Thank you everyone who partnered on this application and thanks to all of you for coming.